sub nine hour Ironman, second fastest Finnish female Ironman time ever, and Kona qualification. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm super happy about the race. <laughs> you said before the race on the interview that the Kona qualification was the main goal. Yeah, it was. I was a little bit afraid of <laughs> telling that to everybody, but uh, yeah, I wanted to be honest. We, I, I trained for it and I went for uh, went for Hamburg to try to qualify for Kona, and I did that. That's awesome. Uh, you had a solid but not a spectacular race at Ironman Mallorca 70.3. Did you feel that this kind of performance was possible at Hamburg? Actually, I did. Um, I think my race on Mallorca was actually quite quite good. Um, I had a good uh, world well, best swim for me, but yeah, it wasn't good in that field. Uh, it was really strong field. I had a strong bike, but I crashed on the bike on the downhill. And it, um, I think it, I ruined maybe a minute there, got lost a minute, and then it ruined my, my run legs. And even though uh, I ran 125, I felt actually quite good. It felt easy, but I just couldn't push, push for the half distance uh, speed. So I was actually quite confident that in the, dub, in, in the double distance, uh, I might do quite okay. Could you take us through the race itself, starting from the swim? Yep. Well, I can first of all say that uh, during the race week, I had an eye infection <laughs> and my side wasn't like 100%. So I was quite nervous before the swim that how I could see and uh, if I could navigate uh, properly in the swim course. So maybe that's why the, the, I was nervous that my start wasn't uh, good enough. So I got uh, behind a girl who was too slow. So when we reached, I think, uh, 300 meters, first tunnel, there was like a few tunnels we have to swim through. So I was blocked uh, behind a girl who was too slow, so I had to pass her and then the front group was gone. And after that, um, I caught uh, Verena Walter and just drafted her the, the rest of the swim because yeah, I wanted to make sure that uh, my navigation doesn't suck. So she made she <laughs> took care of the navigation. I just followed her. So it was actually quite easy effort, uh, one hour, two minutes. Too slow, I, w I can say honestly that it was too slow, but yeah, I felt really good and it was e easy for me. Uh, overall, the swim times were not super fast there, so was it a slow swim course or was it maybe, maybe a little Maybe a little bit, bit um, it didn't look slow, but I think the sun, because we had uh, sun coming from the head, ahead of us the whole first split, like a whole first half of the swim. So maybe that made it faster and it might be that it was a little bit too long or something. So um, yeah, but yeah, I think, uh, and it's, the temperature and otherwise it was really nice. I like to swim in, in general, but yeah, I just lacked the, the first 500 meters to push hard. Yes, and then onto the bike? Onto the bike, yeah. I passed Verena on the T1 and started cycling alone. Um, started, yeah, and then cycled along the whole 180K. Um, I had a, like a quite even power the whole bike leg. But I didn't feel actually, I felt that it's going so slow. And I, I thought that I'm not, I'm not like in top five of the uh, bike um, speed. But yeah, the, at the end, I saw that, okay, I might be cycling faster than the top three and four girls. So I can, yeah, I can say what it was kind of, it felt like <laughs> quite medium, moderate effort. Went mentally actually quite fast, even though it was windy. Yeah, but I didn't like really enjoy because I just kept on thinking that, okay, take it easy, easy enough. So I just took it quite easily and then just rode 180k like a training ride. It felt like that. Uh, did you hear any uh, of the time gaps to the girls during the ride? I didn't hear actually, but I counted myself in the U-turn. And I, I saw that it was between like five and three minutes. I made one bass at the end uh, 50k. Uh, Rene Kaili, and but yeah, she caught a flat after that, and she had to uh, DNF. So it was I was a little bit sad for her. But yeah, one pass during no two passes during the bike leg. So I was fifth after the bike. How did you feel after the bike? Really good. That was first first in my uh, full distances that I actually felt that okay, this this is going good, and felt really fresh, and quite happy to start running. And the run was a PB run. Yeah, it was three hours and two minutes, two seconds. And yeah, I can honestly say that that was the most uh, fun uh, marathon I've ever run. So um, when you start running a marathon in, a, in an Ironman distance and you feel good, that's, uh, that's usually a surprise. 
And uh, that's a wonderful feeling uh, to run um, almost the entire marathon feeling actually rather good. So I started quite fast. I'm, I passed the girl in, uh, in fourth position in 13K. I wanted to actually pass her earlier, but I tried to think that, okay, this is a full marathon. Just keep on not pushing too hard on uh, too early um, since it felt actually so good. So I started with almost four minutes per kilometer pace, but had to slow down to to not not to try uh, yeah start too fast and then i slowed down naturally at the second uh, half but uh, i i think i like kept the same effort but the pace just slowed down a little bit laura philip uh, at the end wasn't sure that she would do such a fast race were you aware that you were going to do sub 9 um during the race no um I, well i saw Actually, I saw the, like the actual time. Well, what's the time when I started running? I saw that okay, if I run, uh, I think I checked that if I run like three hours and six minutes, I might be doing sub nine. But I didn't think about it. Actually, the times are not so important to me. I race for the positions, and I actually like <laughs> slow courses. So I was surprised that these um, people are so like happy about my sub nine. For me, that's uh, just the race and. Uh, Kind of the, I'm more happy about the race effort and about the marathon time, of course, but the total time, I don't care that much. For this season, you took a leave of absence from your day job and went all in as a pro triathlete. How important was it to get the Kona qualification now? Well, I think mentally um, it was important. Financially, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, yeah, this. I took it because I wanted to see that what I'm uh, capable of, because I think at the moment the level is so high that if you work, uh, you, if you have two jobs, it's difficult to really focus on, on, on triathlon and really just make it to the top. So, uh, yeah, I think mentally it was, I wanted, and uh, yeah, I wanted to have a big goal. And when you succeeded, I think, yeah, it was, it was good uh, and important. So what's next? Well, we go to Kona. <laughs> My coach is a project manager, so I think he will make a project out, out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, yeah, hopefully do it well there. Um, we for sure make a, make a uh, goal for that race, but we haven't said it yet. And yeah, of course, I will race before that also. So I'm, um, I'm maybe planning to do a full distance also before Kona to maybe try things, uh, maybe cycle in a hilly course, uh, which I uh, kind of missed in, in Hamburg. And then, uh, yeah, before uh, before uh, traveling to Kona, I will make a kind of uh, training camp in a warm place. Not yet decided where. Awesome. Thank you. And good luck for the season. Thank you.